We are in the Hall of Honor, which is the biggest and the most impressive room of the castle. This is the place where the first king of Romania, Charles I, used to invite his guest. And also, this is the place where he surprised his guests every day by showing them the ceiling. That's the place where king used to press a button and the ceiling started to slide. And this is how he showed the sky from inside. The Hall of Honor, it is the biggest room, as I said, and also one of the most decorated one. The panels of the room are made of more than 40 types of wood inlaid. For this furniture and for the panels, there were more than 600 walkers who used to carve six months, 24 per seven. The panels were made in Vienna, in Bernhard Ludwig workshops. And what is very impressive in here are the wood marketries. There are 14 wood marketries which are depicting medieval castles of the family from Germany and Switzerland. So this is how King showed to his guests his birthplace and also the castles which belonged to his family. The two marble statues in here are depicting King Charles I and Queen Elizabeth, the first Romanian royal couple. And on both sides, there are to be seen two impressive walnut statues, St. George killing the dragon and Madonna of Nuremberg, who are considered the royal family protectors. Very impressive in here. The Renaissance table, it is 500 years old, and that's made of walnut, like the three armchairs. And there is to be seen also from here, a portrait of King Charles I. We're gonna speak about paintings a little bit later, but till that time, let's take a look at the portrait of the king. He's wearing a military uniform, a Romanian one. He was one of the greatest collectors in Romania. He had impressive collections of paintings, books, furniture, carpets, coins, and also one of the largest weapons collections in Europe. We're gonna see a part of those in the Great Hall. But till we get in there, you have to focus on something in this room. The spiral staircase, which is on the first floor, and that one links the first and the second floor of the castle. It's very impressive. That was carved by a Romanian artist, Gheorghe Stănescu. He was just 25 when he carved that one. And he received a scholarship to Vienna from King Charles I. Very impressive, a 27 steps spiral staircase. And at the bottom of that one, there is to be seen a man who's holding the whole stair on his shoulders. That's the main wood decorator of the castle. Till on the first spiral, you're gonna see a portrait, an effigy. That's the Czech architect, Karaliman, the one who gave the final form of this place. We'll have to continue our visit with the great hall of weapons to see a part of the largest private weapons collection in this part of Europe. Let's gonna take a look in there. The Great Hall of Weapons. King Charles I's weapons collection counted about 5,000 weapons and thus was one of the largest private weapons collections in Europe. Are to be seen in the room from uh, German to Swiss, also Spanish and English weapons. But of course, the most impressive in here are the armors. Armors back then were very expensive, so they brought armor to show their wealth. Of course, one of the most impressive one, it is the complete armor for horse and knight, which is unique in our country. It's a 17th century Maximilian armor that weighs about 120 kilos. But there are also to be found in here a sword which was used in Germany in 16th century as an executioner one. So on the blade of it, there is engraved a text in the old German language. In translation, when the sword will be above your head, God will offer you eternal life. Hard to believe, but back then was an honor for being beheaded with that one. In 1906, this room becomes the entrance room of the castle for very special guests. So this is also why, if you look at the ceiling, which is made of painted plaster, 
there are to be found mottoes and shields of the royal families in Europe. Up there, we're gonna find the Hohenzollern family shield, white and black, and the motto, Nihil sine Deo, which means in translation from Latin, nothing without God. In here, as we said, there are European weapons, but now we're gonna take a look in the small hall where are displayed oriental weapons. Most of them are very impressive because those were ceremonial weapons. Let's gonna take a look in there. So as I said, oriental weapons in here. And of course, the most impressive ones are to be found in the showcase. There are two swords in the showcase which were very impressive. First, it is the green sword up there which is uh, an oriental one, a Turkish Shamshir sword, covered in shark skin, it's gold plated and adorned with turquoises. But there is also to be seen in here, a copy after the sword of Gabriel Bathory, who was Prince of Transylvania. This one was made especially for the last king of Romania, Michael I. The sword is made of Damascus steel, velvet, diamonds, rubies, and pearls. That was a gift from his father, Charles II. As we speak about the king, we're gonna take a look in the king's office, which is for sure the most representative and impressive room of this level. Let's take a look in the king's office thus. So as I said, we'll continue the visit to the king's office. Looking around, now we are in a German Renaissance room where ceiling, panels and the whole furniture are made of walnut wood. Those were done in Heinemann workshops, Hamburg, Germany. We're gonna find in here the king's desk. In here, there are also the places where king received his guests in audiences. So for official ones, they use the reading desk. King was also standing up. This is how he showed his respect to his guests. But for private or personal meetings, especially those with the prime minister, they use uh, the cozy corner in here. That's also the place where they usually sign very important papers at that time and documents, especially when King is living in here. So from May to October every year. Looking on the other side of the room, there is to be seen an impressive case in here useful show books, very rare books. And on both sides are to be seen two large American portraits. That are King Charles I wear military uniform and Queen Elizabeth with their daughter, Princess Marie. Unfortunately, Princess Marie died when she was just three and seven months because of scarlet fever. It was so hard for the Romeo royal family at that time. So according to the constitution, the throne should be offered to the king's older brother or to his older brother's son. So this is how they adopted king's nephew, Ferdinand, whom in 1914 became the second king of our country. He married to a princess from England, Mary of Edinburgh. They had six children. First was Charles, who became the third king of Romania as Charles II. He married to Helen, Princess of Greece, and had only one son, Michael, who was the fourth and the last king of Romania. Looking in here, we're gonna find an impressive uh, fireplace which is made of porcelain. In the upper part, that's to be seen, the old Romanian coat of arms. Without Transylvania County, this because Transylvania was a part of the austro hungarian Empire until 1918. So till the end of the First World War, we'll continue our visit to the King's preferred room. It's gonna take a look in there. Now we are in the King's library. As I said, his preferred room. Royal collection counted 40,000 books. But now in here, there are just a part of those, about 400, because most of the books are now to be found in Bucharest at the National Library and also at the Romanian Academy Library. The books are about history, geography, literature, philosophy and arts and those were written in four languages, German, English, French and Romanian. This because King spoke those 
for languages. Now in here, very important, as in all the castles all over the Europe, that it should be a secret door. Just look around and try to find that one. If you manage that one or not, we're gonna take a look here. Have to come closer to here. There are four shelves. In here there are not real books. Those are just book covers, like together. So this is a door. On the other side, there is a secret spiral staircase, which leads exactly in the king's apartment. So this was the king's secret. And also this was uh, the shortcut that king usually use in the morning for come from his uh, uh, breakfast room to the office of the king. One of the queen's preferred room in the castle, it is the old music room, a room which was transformed and from 1910 turns into a literary saloon. Very impressive as a German decoration again, where the panels are made of two types of wood, walnut and curly ash. And the paintings in here, inspired by fairy tales, were done by a German symbolistic artist, Dora Hitz. They are also to be seen in here. There are a lot of empty frames. This is because of a superstition in the Hohenzollern family, which said that it's uh, bad luck to continue building after the owners died. So in 1914, when King Charles I passed away, they completely finished the castle. So this is why the raw rooms, which are, let's say, pretty much unfinished because of the superstition. But there is also to be seen in here, right behind me, a watercolour painted by Her Majesty the Queen. Elizabeth was a painter, musician, translator and writer. Yeah, she was one of the best in music. She used to play piano, violin, harp, harpsichord and also organ. But she also was known as Carmen Silva, which means the forest song. Under this pen name, she wrote 43 books in German, English, French and Romanian. If you take a look around, you're going to find the Queen's German Bechstein piano. There is to be seen also an Italian Raphael harp. And that's also to be found in here, a Romanian violin, which is right on the table. But very impressive in here are also the stained glasses which were made in Germany in settler workshops in Munich. Those are inspired by poems written by a Romanian artist, Vasile Alexandri. He was the one who encouraged Queen Elizabeth to publish. And also he was the one who chose the name as Carmen Silva for Queen Elizabeth. Bronze massive doors which were made in Rome in Luigi Magni workshops with muses of arts. We'll enter in one of the most spectacular rooms, Florentine Hall, a room which reminds us of Italy. In here, they choose the best marble for the fireplace, for example, which is Italian Carrara marble. And in the upper part of it are to be seen three bronze statues, which are copies after Michelangelo Bonarotti. The two cabinets, which are on both sides, are made of ebony wood and semi-precious stones. Those were used in Europe of 16th century as jewelry boxes. Because you speak about an Italian decoration, the ceiling, it is gold-plated. And of course, there are to be seen two impressive large Murano chandeliers. The best glass in the world, and the same used for the mirror up there, a mirror placed especially for see what's the painting in the center of the ceiling. So they place the mirror so high to reflect Calliope, the epic muse. Also in here, because we speak about a monarchy, are to be found two large thrones, which are just for decoration. Hall of Thrones was in Bucharest. All the paintings in here are copies of the masterpieces. Why they chose copies? Because the originals belong to museums or private collections. So it was impossible for the king to brought those. But he ordered copies, a lot of ordinary paintings. 
Yeah, and also some of the masterpieces all over Europe are to be found in here as copies done by one of the most famous artists of Europe. For example, Gustav Klimt. So we'll continue with another reception hall, an impressive Italian room also, but this time the room it is decorated in neo-Gothic style, a room inspired by Palazzo dei Doji, which is in Venice, the Mirrors Hall. Five Venetian crystal mirrors are placed in this room that reflects other rooms for giving the illusion of a large hall. One of uh, the most important ones, it is the mirror that reflects the royal dining room, place where king and queen, also with their guests, used to serve lunch and dinner. The royal dining room, one of uh, the receiving rooms of guests. So, as I said, the table in here is also for guests. So the table is extendable from 12 up to 40 seats. They respect the table French ceremonial, which means that the king and queen sit in the center of the table face to face, till the other guests walk near them. Because we speak about a technique castle, over here in the background of the room, there is to be seen a large cabinet with two ancestors of the king. And in the center, this is a place where at that time waiters took the food for the royal family. The kitchen was in the basement and the food brought up with an electric elevator for food, a dumb waiter, which was right behind the cupboard in the background. Also, the stained glass windows of the room are very impressive. Those were made in Zettler workshops in Munich in 1883. So after the dining room, we continue the visit with the last reception hall, the Moorish room, which is a Hispanic Moorish decoration. The room inspired by the Spanish palace of Alhambra, or Alhambra, situated in Granada, south of Spain. In here, ceiling and walls are fully covered in gold-plated plaster. And as you see inside, chandeliers look like minaret of mosque. Impressive in here, it is right in the background, the white wall, which is a fountain made of Italian Carrara marble, known as the crown fountain, because when the water flows, look like a tear on a cheek are to be seen also in here on panoplies, oriental weapons from the king's collection. And the carpets are Tabriz type, so oriental carpets. This room, it is very important also for the Romanian history, because in here, September 27th, 1914, King Charles I was laying state here for three nights. It was a fashion at that time to have oriental rooms in your mansion or castle. So that's not only the Moorish Hall in here, but that's also a fascinating Ottoman room inspired by the Sultan Palace, which is in Istanbul. The room is fully covered in silk, embroidered with gold. And also are to be seen at the frieze of the room, they placed mirrors for look like small balconies. The entire decoration, it is completely with the uh, words in Arabic language and also the king's water pipe, which is on the table. Nearby, on the swords, you're going to find the tobacco bag. And with this room, the oriental room, we finally closed the basic part of the castle. So after this, we'll have to continue the visit on the first floor. We're gonna find in there apartments for very special guests, royal apartment, and also there is to be seen in there the most expensive apartment in the castle. Let's gonna take a look in there. We have to continue our visit to the royal apartment, which is of course one of the most impressive apartments in the castle. First step. It is in the guard's room. This is the place where King received the report every morning of what's happened in the castle, in Sinaya, and also in Bucharest the night before. 
This is also the place where King usually signed the official papers before he leads to his office. If you remember, we saw already the secret door in the library, which was the link to the royal apartment. Now we have to continue our visit on the corridor for seeing what is the starting place of the secret door. Now, right here in the panel, that's the second secret door, or let's say it's the official one, because through this door, King used to go to his office for sign official papers. Now, this happened only after King and Queen, and also from time to time, his very close guest used to serve breakfast. So we'll continue the visit in the apartment to the breakfast room. Royal breakfast room, where King used to serve the breakfast every morning. We're gonna see the tablecloth, which is an original one. And on table are to be seen three types of German porcelain, Rosenthal, Meissen, and Nymphenburg. Those were considered best European porcelain, according to the French one. And also, behind me, it is to be seen an impressive stove made of Kaiser Umzug porcelain. So, a Swiss porcelain. We speak about official documents, but how about the private mail of the king? He had over there a small desk where he used to check his mail every morning with a beautiful view in front of the royal castle. Our visit needs to continue to see the king's private bathroom and also his master bedroom. So, let's gotta go through there. We'll gotta get in, in the king's bathroom. A bathroom which is split into a restroom after the bath and also the bathroom in here. Very modern for that time. Are to be seen in here, English sinks with hot and cold running water. Belash Castle had storage from the very beginning, from 1883. And we're gonna see also the be there and the original bathtub, which is made of nickel metal. We will continue after this through the dressing room, the royal small dressing room, let's say. Oh, that's the dressing room for only a day. Queen used to dress up five times a day. And we will pass inside of uh, the royal apartment in the bedroom. A German and Flemish mix of style in here. A Renaissance decoration. We're gonna find in here the master bed for king and queen. Very important to be noticed is that King Charles I and Queen Elizabeth were known that they slept together, stepping thus the European rules. There are to be seen and to be known only two royal couples in Europe which do this. So that was Charles and Elizabeth of Romania and Tsar Nicholas II and his wife Alex of Russia. Above the bed, there is to be seen a portrait that depict their daughter, Princess Marie, the one who passed away at just the three and seven months. And very important in this bed, passed away King Charles I, September the 27, 1914. We'll have to continue the visit and see something which is not open for the public and especially, we open that one for you now. It is the Chapel of the Queen. A small chapel with biblical paintings and an Austrian Gebrugger Rieger organ in here. That's also the place where Queen used to pray for her daughter. And because we speak about the Queen, we have one more room, which is not open for the public, but also open for you. That's the Queen's office. Just take a look inside. We're gonna find an Italian Renaissance decoration with a cozy corner in the background, where are to be found stained glasses inspired by fairy tales, like the Snow White. Also, we're gonna see on the desk the Queen's map with the shield of uh, the Romanian royal family and also 
E, a crowned E by Elizabeth, the monogram of the first queen of Romania. Nearby is to be seen a bronze bust that represents King Charles I, first king of Romania. After the royal apartment, we'll continue the visit with the apartments for very special guests. And we're gonna start with the Rococo one. And a little bit later, we're gonna find the most impressive and expensive apartment, the Imperial one, which was decorated for very special guests. Let's gonna take a look in there. Princely or Rococo bedroom is one of the most impressive bedrooms in the castle, inspired by Fontainebleau Castle, a French one, and also by Würzburg. There is to be seen in here a cozy corner where Marie, second queen of Romania, used to serve the five o'clock tea. A neo Rococo decoration where everything it is uh, covered with gold foil. We're gonna see also Italian paintings in the room and also the stove, which is very impressive. A decorative one, if you look close, nearby, we're gonna find the radiator in the wide small box. Wardrobe in here, it is a secret door, which leads to the corridor. It's an escape door in case of emergency. And we're gonna find in the room a queen-size bed. What a bed for one person. This apartment, this bedroom hosted very important guest. So one of them was Sissi, the Empress of Austria. So after the Rococo bedroom, we'll continue our visit with the most impressive and expensive apartment in the castle, the Imperial One, which was an apartment decorated for very special guests. As you see, we enter here through a secret door and we have to continue with a breakfast room prepared especially for the guest. Breakfast room, it is decorated like the rest of the apartment in Austrian neo-baroque style or neo-Maria Theresia style. Impressive in here, it is the furniture, which is in Rococo decoration with obvious and tapestries on it. This is so intimate and probably the cozy corner preferred by the guest. We'll see also the office, which was especially made for guests. So this is how probably they uh, uh, sign important papers and also this is the place where they send letters to their lovers. For the rest of the apartment we'll see the grand office of the guest where you can see probably that ceiling and the carpet looks pretty much the same. It's like the ceiling left a mark on the carpet and right in the background up the stairs there is the master bedroom for the guests. That's so intimate and so impressive. A large apartment which cost the royal family 12 million dollars. This apartment hosted very special guests. Imagine that in here were hosted Emma, Queen of Holland, Gustav V of Sweden or Wilhelm II, the Emperor of Germany. Last room to be visited in the castle are the rooms for ladies in waiting of the guests. We're gonna pass out through the same official door that we use at the entrance. And if you look at the door, you're gonna find the king's cipher, the double C with the number one inside of it. The ladies in waiting apartments were very impressive because the decoration it's very modern for that time. So it's exactly the 1900s decoration specific for Austrian style, Secession. There is a dressing desk, an office, and also the bedroom. But what's also very impressive is if you turn around and look up the door, there is to be found the dressing room for ladies in waiting. You'll see inside of the apartment, a small spiral staircase, which helps ladies in waiting achieve the dressing room, which is up here just for them.
the end of the visit is not the end of the story. So we are waiting you here for a new page of history.